the direct formula for the solution of a dynamical system looks a bit complicated. It would be nice to draw the phase space in this case as well. Can we do this? Yes, we can. Watch this video to see how this is done. Let us summarize the problem first here. We had our discrete dynamical system, x k plus 1 equals a times x k, with the matrix A given, given coefficients. We know that I A is diagonalizable, A equals P times D times P inverse, it's P over here, D over there. And then we know that the choice Y k equals P inverse times X k is a clever choice, because this implies, well, of course, X k equals p times y k, but also y k plus 1 equals d times y k. So how does it look in a commutative diagram? Then we see that a maps x k to x k plus 1, y k is mapped to y k plus 1 by a matrix D. And furthermore, we see that the matrix P maps y k to x k, and the same matrix P maps y k plus 1 to x k plus 1. That means that in fact D is the same transformation as A, only with respect to another basis, with respect to the basis consisting of eigenvectors of the matrix A. So in this new basis, the uh, transformation looks much nicer. So we first are going to look in the transformation over here and in the phase space in terms of the yk and then we use the fact that we can go up via p in order to draw the phase space for the xk because notice we have xk equals p times yk which means in fact that the yk is the coordinate factor of x with respect to the basis consisting of 3 1 and 1 2 so if we know the yk We also know the xk because the yk gives, gives us the coordinates of xk only with respect to another basis. And that's what we are going to use. First, we are going to look into the yk problem. Well, that is straightforward because we have yk plus 1 equals d times yk. So we only have a diagonal matrix of one half for the first component, so that's attracting a two for the second component, so that direction is repelling. So we get the phase space over here, attraction and repellence over there. Combination of attraction and re repeller means a saddle point. And let us translate this in the XK language. That's the language in which we are interested ultimately. So, what do we do? The figure looks quite complicated, but, but it's not that bad. First of all, you plot the eigenvector v1, which is 3, 1 in this case, and a line through the second eigenvector v2, which is 1, 2 in this case. And then th we know that any point, say, on the axis here, uh, to 0 for example, that means that we have to go two steps in the v1 direction and zero steps in the v2 direction. So a point 2, 0 here would correspond to 1, 2, point 2, 0 over there. And a point 1, 0 on the uh, y plane corresponds to one step along v1 and the x plane. So this axis over here is mapped to the line over here. The axis over here is mapped to the line over there. So arrows going inside on this axis go inside here. Axis going inside here go inside over there. And we can do the same trick with the other axis. If you have, for example, in y language the point 3, 0, that means going three steps along the y axis in the y plane over here, that means go three steps along the v2 axis. So then we get somewhere over here. So this line over here is mapped to this line over there, and this line over here is mapped to that line over there. 
which means that arrows going outside here should go outside there, arrows going outside here and there are also going in the same direction. Well, once we have the orange arrows over here, we can uh, finish off the phase space in the x plane. Because if we start here, look at the arrows, they go like this and then like that, so the purple curve should go like this. If we start over here, you go first like this, but then you see that you have to reverse in order to follow the arrows here, so you have to do something like this. And then if you start here, first you go di like this and then up again. So we have almost completed our phase space. But then you might think that this is a bit odd, because now we have here negative uh, lines, and here we have a negative amount of lines and zebras, which is of course unphysical. So the only uh, physical part is this first quadrant, so we are mainly interested in what happens in the first quadrant. So if we start over here with a large amount of zebras and only a few lions, then we are happy. Both populations start to increase. If you start somewhere here in between, with uh, roughly an equal amount of lions and zebras, we are happy too. Initially, the both populations may decrease, but eventually they will turn around and start to increase. However, if you start over here, for example, with a large amount of lions and a small amount of zebras, then it goes horribly wrong. See what happens? We somewhere hit the axis, and at that point there are no zebras anymore. Well, the model doesn't hold, of course, anymore from that point on. There are no zebras, and uh, th 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 no zebras left first, and then eventually, of course, the lions die out as well. So if there are a lot of lions and a few zebras, then too bad, both species will die out eventually.